I wasn't going to do a video about Russell Brand. Obviously working in comedy I'd heard all sorts of rumours but I never paid much heed to them because the comedy circuit is a cesspit of vicious Machiavellian cry bullies desperate to grab onto the legs of the other crabs and drag them back into the bucket. I watched the Channel 4 documentary on him until I got bored, which was pretty quickly because it was boring. They had a few serious allegations, a bunch of bad behaviour and a whole lot of demon eyes, moody music and clips of stand-up. Clips of a stage performance. You might as well show a clip of Brad Pitt playing a Nazi in a film and say, Look, he's a Nazi! They worked on that documentary for years and it was pretty thin gruel. Ooh, but victims haven't come forward yet. Yeah, it's only been 20 years. I guess we should give them some time. And all these Channel 4 executives being interviewed saying, Something should have been done. You were the people explicitly in the position to stop any bad behaviour. And you were the people encouraging and rewarding the bad behaviour that people are now crying about. But the documentary did raise some serious issues that need to be addressed, such as Brand's demon eyes. If mainstream broadcasters are hiring people possessed by demons to present Big Brother spin-off shows, this is very serious? Do we need to get some priests in to exorcise him? But people's responses to the whole thing were nuts, or so I thought. People said that Russell Brand created this right-wing persona and cultivated a following of conspiracy theorists as a defence mechanism against the allegations. But he's not right-wing. You can't just call people right-wing because you think that they're bad now. That's not how political polarity works. And since when has questioning the establishment been a defence against anything? Look at Julian Assange. If if anything, most comedians protect themselves by portraying themselves as perfect woke lefties. I mean, look at all of them. The golden rule in comedy is this. The nicer someone pretends to be on stage, the more of a satanic reptile they are off it. But I also thought that it was daft that people said that Russell Brand was being shut down because he'd become this anti-establishment talisman, speaking out against the Chovid chompers and questioning the ordained narrative. I thought that was silly. Even when YouTube demonetized him, I thought, that's unfair, but that's just YouTube being risk averse. I scoffed at the idea that this was a coordinated deep state effort to silence him. How naive I was. The penny dropped for me when this letter was sent to video hosting site Rumble, which is sort of like YouTube with less censorship, and it's where Russell Brand has got a big presence. It's a letter from Carolyn Dynage, a Tory MP and Minister of State for Digital and Culture, and she's the chair of the Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee. She sent this letter to Rumble and a similar one to TikTok asking Brand to be demonetised. She says, While we recognise that Rumble is not the creator of the content published by Mr Brand, we are concerned that he may be able to profit from his content on the platform. We would be grateful if you could confirm whether Mr Brand is able to monetize his content, including his videos relating to the serious accusations against him. If so, we would like to know whether Rumble intends to join YouTube in suspending Mr Brand's ability to earn money on the platform. Now look, I don't know if Brand is guilty or not. That's a job for the courts, or at least it used to be. Now it's a job for social media or newspaper opinion columns or whatever we've replaced the criminal justice system with this week. But what's his Rumble channel got to do with anything? It's a completely separate issue to the allegations, which are just allegations by the way, he hasn't been charged, let alone found guilty, and even people found guilty of crimes aren't completely erased from the internet. So what is going on? Well, this is where things get interesting. And yes, I admit that up until now, it's been pretty boring. Well, Carolyn Dynage's husband is Baron Mark Lancaster, who was deputy commander of the 77th Brigade from June 2018 to July 2020. The 77th Brigade is the UK military psychological warfare division, Oh, Leo, this sounds like a far-right conspiracy theory. I know, and like most far-right conspiracy theories, it's totally true. Here's those far-right conspiracy theorists, The Guardian, telling you what the 77th Brigade is. Soldiers familiar with social media sought for 77th Brigade, which will be responsible for non-lethal warfare. Against a background of 24-hour news, smartphones and social media such as Facebook and Twitter, the force will attempt to control the narrative. And Wired described the brigade as a psychological operations unit responsible for non-lethal warfare that reportedly uses social media to control the narrative, as well as disseminating UK government-friendly podcasts and videos. So they're supposed to tackle misinformation and disinformation online by foreign enemies of the UK. So Russian bot farms that work to influence elections, that kind of thing. But they've also been working against their own people, British citizens. The 77th Brigade during the pandemic spied on social media posts critical of Chovid jab jabs. Their tweets were reported and censored. Ben Wallace, the Defence Minister at the time, announced a probe into claims by a 77th Brigade whistleblower that the military unit had covertly spied on Brits 
posting about Chovid on social media. The whistleblower, who spoke exclusively to civil liberties group Big Brother Watch and the Mail on Sunday, claimed that Brits were routinely monitored and flagged by the 77th Brigade as there were no safeguards in place to stop millions of our social media posts being scanned during their low-skilled disinformation searches. This was also done by the government's Counter Disinformation Unit, which was set up within the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport in 2019. That is the same department that Carolyn Dynage leads. The Telegraph explains, A secretive government unit worked with social media companies in an attempt to curtail discussion of controversial lockdown policies during the pandemic. The Counter Disinformation Unit was set up by ministers to tackle supposed domestic threats and was used to target those critical of lockdown and questioning the max jab jab nation of children. MPs and freedom of speech campaigners condemned the disclosures as truly chilling and a tool for censoring British citizens akin to those of the Chinese Communist Party. Much of the government's wider work on disinformation is shrouded in secrecy for national security reasons. Large parts of official documents are still redacted. So Carolyn Dynage and her husband both led disinformation units trying to control the narrative, trying to control what people are allowed to say on the internet and what they're allowed to see and now they're trying to erase Russell Brand from the internet. There's no precedent for this. Cliff Richard wasn't erased after his allegations, which was just as well as they turned out to be nonsense. Kevin Spacey didn't have his social media removed and he was exonerated in court, I think. Craig Charles was dragged through the court system and found not guilty and he's still allowed to earn a living. Harvey Weinstein was found guilty, but you can still watch his films. Look, maybe the allegations against Russell Brand are all correct. We don't know because due process hasn't been followed and they haven't been tested in court. But this is separate to the allegations. Even if Russell Brand is guilty, both things can be true at the same time. He could be guilty and this is still a terrible thing. It doesn't exonerate Brand, it just shows that the state are using this as an excuse not to just silence him, but completely erase him from the internet. And that is very worrying. Oh, and by the way, to Rumble's credit, they replied to Carolyn Dynage, basically telling her to shove it up her hoop. Anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and share it with your mates and stuff. And if you want to support me making these videos, consider becoming a Patreon. You can give me money, which is great for me anyway. Uh, there's a link below uh, to do that. Anyway, uh, I've been Leo Kirst. Bye. Bye-bye.